What's up YouTube, it's Taylor from Ranch Strategies with Medicine in Bad Places, and today it's time for another comms check. Okay, so really quick turnaround time on this video, and that quite honestly is because all of you's, the engagement, the comments, the subscribers, guys, from some random dude on YouTube, this is a sincere of a thank you that I can honestly give all of you for the support. I love that people are trying to get their comms plans established and set up and doing research as best they can for if and when they ever have to use them. I like the people that are giving suggestions on how to improve things. That was one of the biggest reasons for such a quick turnaround time on this video. A couple of people pointed out that, hey, with your VHF radio, if you actually had that inside the house, you know, it's not going to penetrate the walls as well as your UHF is, and they are 100% correct. So now that we kind of have the results of UHF trying to get through a structure, albeit a, a wood frame structure, we still have those results in our toolbox. Today, we have the receiver set up outside. There may be a little bit more background noise as a result of that. I apologize, there's not too much I can do, but we are going to do the same testing with a couple more UHF radios. I brought an HT1000 as well as the XTS5000 in addition to the XTS2500 to get us a really good base for the UHF band and when that, what that's going to do just simply outside to outside. And then we brought all the same VHF radios back out to do the same testing, but with virtually no obstructions except the foliage and the terrain. We're also including the terrain map in this video because some people said, hey, we can't see the terrain. What's your elevation difference is? So that is now included, and I'm going to include that in all of the future ComStack videos as well as people find it beneficial to have. So with that, let's get this going. Okay, one half mile, our normal start point. We're gonna start with UHF, again, to get our control first. The XTS 2500. Testing on UHF on the XTS 2500, one half mile. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on UHF on the XTS 2500, one half mile. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Right from there, let's go to the XTS 5000. Testing on UHF on the XTS 5000, half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on UHF on the XTS 5000, half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there will be both of our UHF controls. Now let's get into the VHF. We'll start again with kind of the, one of the leads in the industry right now, the Apex 7000. Testing on VHF on the Apex 7000, half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on VHF on the Apex 7000, half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. From there. Let's do the HT-1000. Testing on VHF on the HT-1000. Testing one, two, three, four, five. HT-1000, half mile range. Testing on VHF on the HT-1000. Testing one, two, three, four, five. HT-1000, half mile range. Right from there, our budget comms winner, the Alliance HD-1. Testing on the HD-1, half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the HD1 half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on the HD1 half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the HD1 half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and I almost forgot we did bring a UHF MTS 2000. So it's like an HD1000, but MTS 2000. But we'll check this on UHF as well. Testing on the MTS 2000, UHF, half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. MTS 2000, 
half mile range. One, two, three, four, five. Testing on the MTS 2000 UHF half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. MTS 2000 half mile range. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I got to three quarters of a mile. Okay, here we are, three quarters of a mile, not wasting any time. The one thing I do just wanna remind everyone is though, is that all of these tests are being done with the OEM antennas. So it's kind of just a test to see, hey, this is what this radio will do right out of the box. And it's really just putting up, you know, the UHF band versus the VHF band based on the factory antennas. So with that, let's start with the XTS 2500 UHF. Half mile range, XTS 2500, correction, three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 2500, testing one, two, three, four, five. Three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 2500, UHF. Half mile range, XTS 2500, correction, three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 2500, testing one, two, three, four, five. Three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 2500. UHF. From there, we'll go to the XTS 5000. Testing three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 5000. Testing one, two, three, four, five, UHF analog, three quarters of a mile, XTS 5000. Testing three quarters of a mile range on the XTS 5000. Testing one, two, three, four, five, UHF analog, three quarters of a mile, XTS 5000. This time I didn't forget. Now we'll go to the UHF MTS 2000. Like I said, it's basically just the HT 1000. Testing three quarters of a mile range on the MTS 2000, three quarters of a mile, UHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing three quarters of a mile range on the MTS 2000, three quarters of a mile, UHF analog, testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, let's switch it over to VHF. First up, the Apex 7000. Testing on VHF, Apex 7000, three quarters of a mile, testing one, two, three, four, five. Apex 7000, three quarters of a mile. From there, we'll go to the HT1000. Testing three quarters of a mile on the HT1000 VHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing three quarters of a mile on the HT 1000 VHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And then last but not least, the budget winner, the Alliance HD1. Testing on VHF three quarters of a mile on the HD1. Testing one, two, three, four, five, VHF analog. On the HD1, three quarters of a mile. Okay, now for the uh, torture test. We'll push it out to a mile. Okay, there it is, the one mile mark. Man, I have to tell you, hot and humid, especially humid, cannot describe how it is out here today, but enough complaining. UHF on the XTS. Testing UHF on the XTS, one mile range, 
testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS 2500. Testing UHF on the XTS, one mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS 2500. From there, let's go to the XTS 5000. One mile range on the XTS 5000 on analog, UHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS 5000. One mile range. One mile range on the XTS 5000 on analog, UHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS 5000. One mile range. All right, and then the MTS 2000. Testing one mile range on the MTS 2000, UHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one mile range on the MTS 2000, UHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, over to the VHF side we go. Testing on VHF on the Apex 7000, one mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Again, VHF, Apex 7000, one mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, the HT 1000. Testing VHF on the HT 1000, one mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. HT 1000, one mile range, VHF. One, two, three, four, five. And our HD1. Testing on VHF, one mile range on the HD1. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the VHF, one mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, well that's gonna conclude this test. I cannot wait to get back and get these results, especially since we have just the previous test where we had the receiver indoors to compare it to. I'm hoping VHF comes through and you know lives up to its expectations, but we'll get back and see. Damn! Someone explain this to me, I don't understand. I think the VHF actually did worse this time than it did the last test when we had the receiver inside the house. This time we had it outside and just so you guys are aware, the height of the antennas was at 53 inches. So basically, you know, somebody roughly holding an HT in a comfortable position was the height of the antennas. And somehow I think VHF did worse. The worst performing one was the Apex 7000. At three quarters of a mile, the XTS 2500, the XTS 5000, the MTS 2000, all had a great signal get through. The Apex 7000 was barely audible, despite that things, you know, having the largest antenna out of all the ones that we tested. The HD 1000 sounded better, the HD 1 sounded better than the Apex 7000. More to that though, wavelength alone in the woodland environment, I'm sorry, uh, forget the experts and forget their feelings. If we are in a densely wooded environment with some minor to moderately changing elevations, we're using UHF. That is clearly the better choice and it gets the signal through at a much better rate. At a mile, BHF didn't do anything, UHF, Still got the job done and got through there. This is not to say that we're going to be done with this testing of VHF. One of the things we have in store is we do occasionally operate in the marine environment. So we are going to get these things out on the water and really put that line of sight to the test and see if VHF can come back and save itself from UHF. So that was unbelievable. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm shocked by these results.
getting on beyond that. Don't forget, next week, June 10th to the 14th, we're going to be at the OTOA, the Ohio Tactical Officers Association Conference. Again, trade shows on Tuesday. We're teaching on Friday. If you are going to be there, make sure you come by to the booth. Let us know you follow us on the YouTube channel. Let us know if you're liking the YouTube channel. And we're going to be doing a bunch of raffles. With those raffles, we're going to be raffling off two of our canine medical operator kits. Tim Anderson from Anderson Rescue Solutions hooked us up with a ARS rescue strap. We're going to be raffling that off. It's in multicam, which is pretty awesome. And Phil Knives, PHL, like Philadelphia, gave us a knife to raffle off as well. So we're going to be doing all of that on Tuesday at the OTOA. At least that's when the entry uh, will be open. We're actually going to do the raffle on June 30th. Beyond that, also again, due to the conference, we got tons of our hats back in stock. Here's a picture of all the different color designs. If you like any of them, go to the YouTube Ranch Strategies' main page on YouTube. There is a PayPal link there. Click on that. If you donate 30 bucks to the channel, send us an email letting us know you did. We'll go ahead and ship you out whatever hat you want. So I hope you found this useful. I think I'm still in shock over the results of this. It's been absolutely crazy. If you like this, we also had one of the YouTube commenters say, hey, love the channel, love what you guys are doing. You need to do a call to, call to action. So this is our call to action for everybody watching this. If you're enjoying this content, any of it whatsoever, it's on the channel. We have a bunch more to come. Please share the video with everyone. Have them subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build it up and make it as big as possible so we can do as much as we possibly can with it. Until then, we'll see you next time. Maybe we'll see you next week. And if not, we'll see you in the next video.